Hi, I'm Esther Kane with SeniorSafetyAdvice.com and you've probably come to this video because you're a caregiver looking after a senior loved one that has sundowning. So if you are, please be a little patient with me because I'm going to explain what sundowning is to anyone who may not know. Um, but first, before I do that, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put out a YouTube video every single Friday, and hopefully it's with information you can use. All right, what is sundowning? Normally, sundown occurs in patients or in people that have um, dementia or Alzheimer's, but not always. A very small percentage of people who do not have those diagnoses um, can experience sundowning. It usually is a series of symptoms that occur starting between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. sunset time, hence called sundowning. It's actually called sundowner's syndrome, but the sundowning effect that people experience can be very real and very destructive, um, not only to themselves, but to everyone around them, especially their caregivers, for sure. Um, there's actually no official diagnoses for the sundown, um, sundowner syndrome. There's no cause for it uh, that's been identified. There's no treatment. There's no cure. So really, it's more trying to figure out how to um, minimize uh, the incidences that are occurring because the sun, once uh, someone enters that sundowning time, it can last just a few hours or it can last all night long. It's different with every person. Um, and it also changes as time goes by. So it doesn't mean you're, once you start seeing that in your loved one, doesn't mean that it's going to be there forever, but it can be there for quite a length of time. So be patient. But anyway, um, the Alzheimer's Association reports that about 66% of people with dementia and, and or Alzheimer's get sundowner syndrome. They exhibit these signs of sundowner syndrome. So you're not alone. So I urge you, if you are a caregiver caring for a senior loved one who is exhibiting sundowners, uh, um, go find a support group because there are literally thousands, if not millions of other people out there who are experiencing what you're experiencing. You want to learn from them, you can learn from them, and you can share your own stories and help them out as well. But you are definitely not alone, not with 66% of dementia and Alzheimer's patients exhib you know, exhibiting these. All right, so that's sundowner's syndrome. Um, the kinds of things that you might see someone experiencing when they're going into that sundowning stage is everything from confusion, anxiety, um, agitation, aggress aggression, restlessness, panic, pacing, wandering, resistance, shouting. Um, it's almost like a Jekyll and Hyde. They can be fine all day long, but then once that you know time occurs, that sunset time occurs, they can just turn into somebody you don't even recognize or understand what's happening. When I worked as an occupational therapist and I worked with hundreds of patients who were going through the sundowning, and to me, it just always seemed to resemble what a lot of my friends were going through with their young children, you know, two, three, and four, where they would throw tantrums and they would just burst out crying with no significant precursor, nothing that seemed to initiate the action, like what was going on? And then, you know, 10 minutes later they were fine or whatever. That doesn't necessarily happen with someone going through sundowning, but it kind of seemed like that. So it made me understand a little bit more, or at least accept the fact more that they're certainly not doing it on purpose. They're just reacting to something that's going on you know, in their brain, in their body, something. You know, young children can't identify what they're feeling and they, as a result, they can't tell you what they're feeling. So they act out in these elaborate, you know, demonstrative kind of ways. And that's what I think my own personal theory 
is what's happening with a lot of these patients with dementia and Alzheimer's, that they cannot necessarily tell you what's happening. Even if they can verbalize, um, they can't quite comprehend what's going on. So they tend to lash out and it just seems as if they're just going, you know, berserk, but not necessarily. So anyway, there are eight contributing factors that can trigger and or exacerbate uh, sundowners. So I'm going to go through each of them. And then later we're going to talk about some tips on what you can do as a caregiver. If you're tr working with somebody, helping somebody who has happens to be going through this. Okay. The eight things that contribute, you may know some and some you may not. First is exhaustion. If they've been busy all day, um, you know, stimulated all day, um, it could be that they've just gotten this, um, that they're exhausted, but they're not tired enough to sleep, but not awake enough to really do anything, but they're fe not feeling well. And as a result, that can definitely trigger um, or exacerbate uh, sundowning. Very much like a young child, if they don't get to take their nap, you know they can get cranky and, and difficult to manage. Very similar to that. Uh, frustration. If they're doing something, I, I do believe that everyone should have purposeful activities, even if you have dementia and Alzheimer's. It's very important to have purposeful activities. And if they're trying to do something, build a sandwich, you know, put together some, a deck of cards, whatever, whatever it is, and they can't do it, they may become frustrated, that can certainly easily trigger or exacerbate in any of the sundowning uh, symptoms. Um, exposure to fighting or disturbing images of, of violence. It could be anything, you know, if the family is fighting, if the dog and the cat are fighting, if, um, you know, the violence on TV or violence on a video game, those can actually end up triggering uh, or exacerbating what they're already going through. So you want to try to keep a calm uh, environment for them. I know that can be difficult sometimes if your senior loved one is living with you and your family. Um, but again, it's not necessarily going to be that way for the next several months or years. Sometimes the sundowning just goes away just as quickly as it came. But again, every individual person is different. So you can speak to your physician about it and see what his experience is and what information he can give you. All right. Discomfort, <coughs> excuse me, any form of discomfort, be it mental pain, physical pain. It could be anything. It could be their underwear is, you know, creeping up on them. It could be high blood pressure. It could be that they're thirsty or hungry or hot or cold. Um, you know, their shoes are too tight. Um, it could be anything. So whatever causes them discomfort could trigger or exacerbate uh, sundowning syndromes. Um, this orientation routine is extremely important for anyone that has dementia or Alzheimer's. And if you break that routine and they take them to a new place, do something new or different, that disorientation can cause panic and anxiety, which can, of course, trigger um, sundowning syndrome. So you, again, want to keep thing cal things calm and definitely, definitely stick to a routine as much as you possibly can. Um, lack of sleep is also a factor because you're just kind of living in that fog state. Any of us who've gone, you know, several nights without sleeping well, you know that you're, you're alive, but you're not living because you're just in that fog state and can't quite function well. Well, it's the exact same kind of thing. It causes that exhaustion, causes that discomfort, which again could contribute to sundowning. Um, some medications can actually contribute. So if you notice that your senior loved one is taking a new medication and now all of a sudden you're seeing either a, an elevated version of sundowning or the beginning of sundowning, immediately speak to the physician. Um, it may be the medication is triggering it for some reason. So get that uh, cleared up. The last one, number eight, is poor lighting. And you may wonder, what? 
why would poor lighting have anything to do with you know triggering or aggravating sundowning well the reason is that when many patients that have dementia or alzheimer's um, shadows tend to create they can create hallucinations actually but they can also they're they're um they're not perceiving them as shadows i can't tell you how many hundreds of patients i worked with we'd be walking down the hallway and a shadow would be cast on the floor and the patient would stop. There is nothing I could do, like pulling a donkey across the road. There is nothing I could do to get that patient to step forward, to step on that shadow. They were convinced that it was a hole or something. Whatever it was, they couldn't perceive it as a shadow. They would do all they could to try to step over that shadow, which of course would cause them to lose balance and fall and everything else. So the more lights you have around, the less shadows you're gonna have, the less shadows you're gonna have, the less disorientation, panic and anxiety, which all contribute to sundowning. So lighting is very important. Um, all right, there are 19 things that I listed that you can do uh, to um, manage sundowning. And I'm gonna have all this information down in the description below. But number one, as I said already, keep the house well lit. Keep the living environment well lit, day, night, you know, as long as they're awake, keep it well lit to avoid the shadows. Number two, make their sleeping environment as comfortable as possible. That could mean new pillows, new sheets, or at least comfortable pillows and sheets. Um, you know, aromatherapy, soft music, a night light, um, the curtains that block the sun, anything at all to make them uh, as comfortable as possible so that they can sleep through the night, they can feel safe and secure, which is really a big issue for anyone suffering through dementia and Alzheimer's because there is this constant state of um, they just don't know where they are, who they are, what's happening, and that can of course cause anxiety in anyone. All right, number three, if they do have trouble sleeping, speak with your physician to see if there's any medications that may help. Um, sometimes it could just be something as light as an herbal supplement, but whatever it is, speak to your physician first and see what they may recommend. Number four, eat a smaller meal at dinner time and a larger meal at lunch time. A lot of cultures already do this and it's actually a good thing to do. It um, does allow you to sleep better at night, mostly for most people. I mean, my sweet mom-in-law, she's as tiny and skinny as can be, but she eats. I wish I had that metabolism. That woman can eat and she loves to eat. She needs to eat in the evening just before she goes to bed because it will literally wake her up when she's just so hungry. So of course, you know, go by what the person that you're working with or caring for go by what their personal needs are. But generally speaking, most people do sleep better if they have a lighter meal in the evening, the heavier, heavier meal at lunchtime. Um, it's recommended to avoid stimulants, of course, you know, coffee, alcohol, nicotine at night, because those things can also disturb your sleep, which could um, exacerbate, contribute to the uh, sundowning. Uh, create a schedule, routine. Routine is so extremely important. So as much as you can stick to the routine as possible, the better. We always try to do that in the nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And um, when I did you know, home health with patients, I always stress the importance of routine. I know it's extremely difficult when you're juggling family and work and everything else but as much as you possibly can, that really does help very much for anyone who's suffering through uh, those horrible diseases. You want to try to avoid sleeping a lot during the day, unless it's what the person used to do. You know, if they were a couch potato, you're not gonna force them to try to be more active and not sleep during the day. If they've been doing that for the last five years, they're gonna keep doing that. But generally speaking, if the person was very active 
um, in the community or, you know, uh, piddling around the house, cleaning, gardening, whatever, then you want to try to keep them active. Uh, you want to continue that because that's what they're used to. When they get very restless, it's very important to provide them with an activity that they can do. And it could be anything. It could be folding towels. It could be um, sorting coins, you know, or photographs or uh, weeding in the garden or, you know, anything. Anything that they can do without being frustrated is a purposeful activity for them and it will keep them busy and avoid that restlessness that can so easily and you know so often accompany, accompanies sundowning. Um, don't force them to do anything they don't want to do. Don't force them to rest uh, if they don't want to rest and don't force them to do an activity if they don't want to do an activity. Maybe just switch to another activity or the, the point is you don't want to agitate them you don't want to confront them. You don't want to make them any angrier than they already are at possibly at what's happening to them. You know, we, we definitely don't know. We're not in their shoes. We can't possibly understand what it is to go through the process of dementia and Alzheimer's. So take that into consideration. Um, um, I'm looking through my notes. <laughs> If they seem to need something, but they can't express it, just like a, a two-year-old may be crying or whatever, and I hear a lot of parents saying, what do you want? What do you want? Of course, the child can't tell them what they want, but they obviously need something. It could be anything. It could be, you know, changing their underwear, changing their diaper. It could be that they're hungry, that they're thirsty. Something is causing them a level of discomfort. And if you can learn to read the signs of what that person may need um, at that time to help calm them down, that could go a long way into making the sundowning not so stressful and difficult to live through for them and for you. Music, if they can hear it, can also be extremely soothing. I know I personally use my Alexa device and I play the meditation station most all day long. It's a great way, it's just a nice soothing music, you know, throughout the house and good to work through and uh, do anything, read, you know, by. And even if you just wanted to take some time to step back, um, take 20 minutes to uh, meditate or, you know, breathing exercises or to just relax and just to listen to that kind of soothing music, I would highly recommend that. And if you can do it at a specific time, you know, every day at four o'clock, you know, whatever, then that would be even better because again, it's a routine. Um, obviously, if it's nothing that they've ever had any interest in or done before, don't force it on them. It's, but if it's something that you know that they would enjoy, you could at least try it. If it does, then you can certainly incorporate it into the regular day. Um, some doctors actually recommend vitamins, supplements. I know that there were a few doctors I worked with who uh, seemed to recommend uh, vitamin B1. I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a physician, so I don't know, I'm just telling you my experience, but please talk with your doctor and see if they have any recommendations for you for uh, something like that that may help, may make the situation better. Um, I remember a patient who responded very well to foot baths. Um, so in the evening, when she would start her sundowning, she was getting very agitated. Um, we talked with her daughter, and her daughter said that she always loved um, having her feet massaged. So we couldn't really do that. You know, we, you know, all nursing homes and facilities, they seem to be all understaffed, so we don't have that kind of time. But we did want to help her. So we got her one of those um, massaging foot baths, you know, the kind that they're sort of like a little mini um, hot tub with jets and whatever, and of course put you know, water in there. And so every night, it came to, every night after dinner, uh, she would sit down to watch her favorite show, you know, Jeopardy, and she would have her feet in this foot bath with the jets running and 
it seemed it calmed her down greatly. I mean, she would be, you know, instead of pacing and yelling and, and just so agitated, which she normally wasn't during the day, in the evening, as soon as we introduced that foot bath, it seemed to work. So I don't know. I don't know why it works. Um, we, you know, as therapists, we want to do anything we can to make the patient as comfortable um, as possible. So, hey, maybe that's an idea for you if your senior loved one happened to like foot massages or foot baths. But it's a story I remembered as I was writing this, um, this information. The AARP actually has an article, and again, I'll have a link to that below, that they recommend essential oils. Now, I have never used essential oils. I know several of my friends swear by them. Um, for all kinds of things, especially lavender for soothing and calming. Um, again, I have never tried it, so I'm not sure, but if you want to give that a try, uh, basically aromatherapy, uh, if you want to try that in your environment and see if that seems to help, it may. It certainly wouldn't hurt, and it'll make your house smell quite nice, I think. So, again, the very last tip I have to tell you as a caregiver is to join a support group. Find the support that you need because going, caring for someone with dementia or Alzheimer's is very difficult. Adding sundowning to that is just another layer of difficulty. So you do not have to do it alone. 66% of patients, of people who have dementia or Alzheimer's experience sundowning, you are definitely not alone. So go online, check the links I have below, and look for an online support group, even some on Facebook, I'm sure, that you can speak to with other caregivers, see what they're going through, how are they managing it, and you, they can help you, and perhaps you can help them. All right, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, share your comments with us. We all, we respond to, or we try to respond to every single comment we get. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put a video out every single Friday. Uh, if you have any ideas for any topics you would like us to cover, let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. All right, take care. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'll see you next week. Bye.